Okay, welcome. We're going to talk a little bit about building this latest truck kit. This is going to be a truck that's actually going to have a kind of a Craftsman truck, NASCAR truck retro theme going on here. Just a silly little project that we're going to be racing here later in the year. And uh, some people have asked some more questions about the building, so I thought I'd get started. Uh, first of all, this is a really nice kit. Um, as you can see, I've already done some cutting here. We'll get to that later. What we're really talking about to start things off is um, the tube method on how to set the width for the wheels. Now, um, this is basically what you're looking at here is that you could see the partial tubes on each side and that sets the width inside the motor bracket right here. So some people will use axle collars they won't do this and you can use that and that's fine I just like to use this it's just my preferred method so this one's already been cut it fits the truck perfectly and I thought we'd talk about how we got here all right we're gonna talk about the parts that we're using on this kit uh, we're gonna cover all of the parts at the end of this series but and I'll have a full list for you but we're gonna cover the parts used in every step the best that I can first of all I'm going to go with the, the classic steel wheels from CB Design. These are 20 by 10.5. Uh, these are for 332nd bore because that's the bore that I'm going to use for this project. Then for the tires, I'm using the Paul Gage 2612.5s. Pretty simple. Uh, these have the, the, the groove here, the flange, for them to fit the wheel. They fit great. Then next up is going to be your bushings over here. Now, just depends on what bushing you want to use. Or what's available but in this case I just had the Kofert or the JK uh, 3 16 bushings with 332nd bore of course we have to have our bracket here's the JK bracket that I prefer to use then we're gonna have our tubing now this is 732nd K and S tubing there's a couple of different part numbers there's 5130 for a double pack and 8130 for the single tube but like I said I'll have all these links for you and of course your 332nd axle. Now whether you use uh, piano wire for this step as a setup axle or the actual axle you're going to put in the car doesn't make any difference but you still have to have one for this step. So now we've covered the parts we'll get to it. Okay a pretty easy method at least I think it is to determine how wide we need to have our axle tube for that method is simply mount the wheels and tires on a drill blank axle and uh, test fit it on whatever vehicle <laughs> of your choice so that's what I've done here now this side I've already tightened down installed the tire this side I left loose to adjust now you see that I have the tire pulled back already and that's fine because I can tell from the bottom down here on this edge I can look and I can see if we have the clearance that we want so I adjust around and I look and I think yep that's where it needs to be now I can just take my wrench hold steady give it a tighten it's on there so now I can put the tire back on and double check yep that's about where I want it to be now we can take the tires off and we can measure all right now we can measure our width you notice I've taken the tires off it's just easier that way some tires a little wider get in the way and you get out your handy dandy caliper now I'm gonna tell you if you don't have one you're gonna start scratch building please get one you'll thank me for it okay I mean you can use a good old-fashioned machinist rule and stuff but I'm an old fart too and I really like this so anyway now we can just get here and go between here and get our measurement really simple hmm yep about 50 millimeter give or take always double check make sure you're flush in there yep so now we know how wide we want this to be it's pretty simple all right it's time to talk about bushings and uh, I know, I know I'm excited too. Everybody gets that way. 
Just calm down and we can get through this together, okay? Now, not all bushings are created equal. As you can see here, uh, three different types. They're all 3 sixteenths, so they will fit inside the tubing that we're going to use, our 732nd tubing that fits in the bracket. But you can notice some of them have different flanges and some of them are smooth. So this Coford, um, JK, Parma, um, they're all a little bit different. But what you're looking at is how thick they are from end to end when you put them in your tubing. So you can see here that this has a little bit more to it than the other, than the other bushing that would be our flush mount without the speed ring, as they call it. So that's about one millimeter right about there. The, uh, the Parma, JK, Copard, whichever one you're using, that can be close to 1.75 with that additional speed ring, as they like to call it. So you have to take that into account when you talk about cutting the tube. Is it a big deal? Not really. All you have to do is just cut this a little bit long and then you can file it down and adjust it. So anyway, we're thinking 50 millimeter is the total length. So let's put, uh, I don't know, let's just call it three millimeter because I'm gonna go proud three millimeter. So total, so we could go 47 here at the tube. It probably is gonna be a little bit long, but that's okay. So we'll measure about 47 millimeter here. We'll mark it. We'll cut it a little bit proud. Probably go 48 because it's always easier to take away than it is to add to. So we'll go ahead and cut that. We'll put our bushings in here and we'll test fit. All right, so we've cut the tubing. You can see that I have the bushings installed. I'm using the coffered here to show you these with the, the added little speed ring, the extra width. And I cut this tube right at 47.25 millimeter. Like I said, a little proud, but you know, it's always easier, like I said, to take away than it is to add to. So now we can install the bushings, and then all you have to do is you can roll them in here and you test and you make sure that it clears. So if it clears, you got a little bit here and there, but you know that it fits, you've got your tubing at the right width for the bushings that you chose to use. Just that simple. Okay, so let's say you file down or you cut your tubing just a little bit shy, just a few thousandths, and you just want a little bit more. Well, that's fine. Don't worry about it because you can use spacers. So it's like our corner. Other companies make spacers in different thicknesses, different thousandths, and you can really fine-tune your width using these spacers, these these uh, nylon spacers, just uh, well, I mean they're like indestructible. <laughs> I've had some on cars for I don't know how many years now, and they're still running strong. So don't worry if you get that little bit off. If it's a little short, you know, a little narrow, and you want a little bit more width, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and pick up some spacers. You're going to need these for scratch building anyway. All right. Well, uh, I know it was just exciting. Uh, we'll get on to part two here in a little bit, but. I just wanted to share this about the tube method so that you know exactly how to do this on your new project.